by anyone. Welcome fellow Toastmasters and guests. This meeting of online presenters has now begun. Guests, please note that in order to be a member of our club, you must be a current or former active member of Toastmasters International and have completed at least six Toastmaster official speeches, or alternatively, if you have substantial relevant presentation experience, you may apply for membership after demonstrating your abilities in a two to three minute speech delivered during one of our club meetings. All requests for membership are subject to approval by the members of our club. If you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure it shows your name and role if you have one, right click and select rename to do so. We have members and guests from many countries throughout the world. Thus, as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language or word usage that may be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to cultural differences. Please note that we will be recording the meeting. Your video or audio contribution may be used for club marketing purposes. Also, please mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Please welcome our club president, DTM, Andrew Bern. Thank you, thank you very much. Welcome everybody to our club. I think we've already said much of the stuff that we want to say already. We welcome all of you that are guests. We always welcome new guests coming on and we hope that the guests enjoy what we do take what we do and take it and incorporate it into your own meetings back where your home is. I think that tonight's theme has to do with astronomy. And tonight, actually, for most of the US and, and most of the globe, we're going to be seeing a red moon, which you can see in my background. Uh, the next one is the year 2025. So if you missed the one that uh, you can see at 12 Pacific time or three o'clock in the morning Eastern time until about 6.30 on the East Coast, it's something that you should be aware of, but we're gonna get into more of that during the table topics. So I'll see you all there. The toast match today is, who is our toast match today? Today is Kim. Kim. So I turn it over to you, Kim, and have a great meeting. Thank you, Mr. President, my fellow Toastmasters, and our most welcome guests. As a, I'd like to welcome everyone to Online Presenters Toastmasters. I'm Kim Leeming, and it's my honor to be Toastmaster of the Day for you this evening. The theme of the day for today, as Andy mentioned, is astronomy. We now interrupt the normally scheduled meeting for some breaking news. I am so sorry, here we go. Oh, that's what's happening. For some breaking news, there will be something special and moony in the sky tomorrow. On November 8th, we will experience a total lunar eclipse. Tomorrow's total lunar eclipse will be the second of the year. NASA's Scientific Visualization Studio has some fascinating, fascinating. and moony videos on their website. In fact, they are stellar. Here's a detailed map of tomorrow's eclipse. So get on to that. The moon will be traveling above the Pacific Ocean during this eclipse so that both Hawaii and Alaska are well situated to witness the entire event from beginning to end but totality will only be visible in the early morning, hours before moonset in all of North and Central America, and in the early evening after moonrise in Asia and Australia. This is the last lunar eclipse for a while. The next one will not occur until March of 2025. By the way, did you know that the sun is so bright that it didn't have to go to college? Yes, it already has thousands of degrees, ha ha ha. Get it? Actually, the surface of the sun is around 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 5,600 degrees Celsius. Tomorrow's eclipse will be, let's wait a second here. Tomorrow's eclipse 
will be the year's longest lunar eclipse with a duration of five hours and 45 minutes. An eclipse happens when the moon enters the Earth's shadow. That causes a light from the Earth's sunrises and sunsets to be cast on the moon, causing it to temporarily appear red. By the way, one night I was up all night wondering where the sun went. Then it dawned on me. Back to the astronomy news. During the eclipse, the moon will turn blood red. This happens because the green and blue light are scattered, but the red wavelengths get filtered out. This phenomenon is known as Rayleigh scattering in physics. It's the same reason why the sun appears red during sunrise and sunset. Some of that red light is refracted or bent as it passes through the Earth's atmosphere and ends up shining on the moon with a ghostly red light, as in the picture behind me. Unlike solar eclipses, no special eye protection is needed for viewing a lunar eclipse. While the <coughs> lunar eclipse can be observed with the unaided eye, a pair of binoculars or a telescope can enhance the view. So, as Andy mentioned, if you miss this one, you're going to have to wait for the next one, and that's going to be in the year 2025. So let's get on to tonight's meeting. Our meetings consist of four main parts. The first part is the newest addition to our club's meetings. This is the tip of the day, where the presenter gives us a three to five minute lecture about technology, technique, or leadership. The second part is the prepared speeches. This is where normally three people, but tonight one person will present a speech for a particular project within their Toastmasters pathway. The third part is table topics. This is the impromptu speaking part of the meeting where we get the chance to practice speaking off the cuff. This is where it really pay, play, pays to plan it, P-L-A-N-E-T, plan it. And the final part is the evaluation portion of the meeting. Each of the one speaker will receive an evaluation. This is a great opportunity for all of us to learn from the valuable and actionable feedback each or this speaker will receive. I will now introduce the interstellar team of people who will be assisting to make today's meeting wonderful. They will each have one minute to describe their role for tonight's meeting. The timer for today's meeting is Lou Brown. Lou, would you please tell us your duties as timer? As soon as I stop laughing, certainly. Madam <laughs> Toastmaster. Boy, I love your Toastmaster themed information. It's always wonderful to hear. As timer, I will be timing every speaker's speech or delivery. Speakers have different timing requirements and table topics and evaluations, but the sequence will be the same depending on their timing parameters. I'm going to show a green card at the beginning of their speech requirements, yellow card in the middle, red card at the end, and they will have 30 seconds to wrap things up. Back to you. Thank you, Lou. Next up is our odd counter. Today's odd counter is Isabel Kaduri. Isabel, could you please describe your duties tonight? Thank you, Madam Toastmaster of the day. The purpose of the odd counter is to note filler word, filler sounds, or crutch words used by everyone who speak during the meeting. Filler words may be un, a, uh, or a. Uh. Example of overused words are so and well, but like, and you know, things like that. And during the evaluation of, of the evaluation portion of the meeting, I will report my observation when called upon. Back to you. Thank you, Isabel. Next up is our grammarian, Christine Campbell. Christine. Could you please talk about your book for tonight? Yes, Madam Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters and our most welcome guest. As grammarian, it's my responsibility to pay close attention to all the speakers listening carefully to their language usage. I'm going to take note of any improper language as well as any outstanding words, quotes, sayings, or thoughts. And as grammarian, Grand Mary, and it's also my duty to announce the word of the day. Now, today's word of the day is Mooney, and that's M-O-O-N-Y. It's an adjective, and it means dreamy, listless, or silly, pertaining to or characteristic of the moon and moonlit. Back to you. Thank you, Christine. Tonight's watcher is Joni Renee Laylaw. Joni, could you please share your duties for tonight? Thank you. Kim, I'll be watching you. 
I will be keeping an eye on everybody. And so far, I have been amazed. And you have put me in a very moony experience. The celestial bodies are being noted. And I will give my report when called upon to do so. Back to you. Thank you, Joni. The chat monitor for tonight is Sunny Fridge. Sunny, could you please describe your role for tonight? Thank you, host of the day, Toastmaster of the day. As chat monitor, I will keep track of the most helpful, encouraging, and humorous posts throughout the meeting. For instance, links to external resources or humorous observations, but not too moony. But those that are based on what other members said or did make for good highlights. When called upon, I'll give a one minute report highlighting the most noteworthy items placed in the chat during the meeting. Back to you. Thank you, Sunny. Our vote counter for tonight is Carolina Ramirez. Carolina, could you please talk about your role for tonight? Hello, Kim. My role today as a vote counter is to count the votes for the table topics section, I will be giving you a link on the chat and you can vote for the best table topic speaker and I will give you my report at, at the end of the meeting. Back to you, Kim. Thank you, Carolina. This brings us to the tip of the day portion of the meeting. Tonight's tip of the day is being presented by Angela Heath. Take it away, Angela. Hello, fellow Toastmasters. This tip made me have such a moody smile. I was so excited about this resource. Even though I'm on sabbatical, I said, I have got to share this with my Toastmasters friends. And the reason I love it, it's not going to cost you any additional money if you already have Office 365. Now, in order to demo this, the first thing I have to do is to turn my video off in Zoom because I will be using my video actually inside of my PowerPoint. So this is Cameo, everybody. Whether you are using it inside of a video, or you're using it inside of a photograph. It will put your photo any place you want to on the screen in a number of different shapes. So like this, for example, I love to use this background when I'm doing my training because I'm pretending like I'm looking at all of these various Zoom participants as I continue to train. And you can also put it anywhere, in any shape, any form, anywhere you want it to be. You can put it anywhere. So as you're doing your presentation, you are right there with it. Now, this is one thing that I do. I will point to it. And if I, I didn't get a chance to do it today, but if I use a certain transition morph, I could actually push this triangle and it will float across the screen. So you can also make it full screen. And you notice I put my own name down there. I am not stuck up in that little corner where Zoom usually puts us, where no one can see your facial expressions and we don't know what you look like. You can barely see it. Now, in order for me to show you how to do this, this is another thing that's quite interesting. I have to actually stop my recording and then I will be able to show you. If I did not stop the recording, this, this is what I'm doing behind the scenes. Remember when we are using Zoom, we have the slide presentation open and we have the PowerPoint tool open. And if you keep both of those open, you will not be able to show how to do it. So while I'm talking, I close down the slide presentation. So this is Cameo. All you have to do is click on insert and it will put you in the slide. So for example, if I wanna do a new slide, I would 
hit there. Go all the way over to the right, Cameo. There's my new feed right inside of PowerPoint. And this is the fun thing. I can use all of these different ways of showing up with it. I can put myself in a triangle. I can put myself in a circle. I can even go over to camera shapes and do some fun stuff. I can change that shape to look like anything I want it to look like. And then the only other tools that you can use here are things like my camera shape, where you can get some of the fun shapes. All of them don't work, but most of them do. You can do the border. So for example, if I wanted this border to be yellow, I could click on yellow and then I could change the width of the border. I can click on camera effects and I can give myself that beautiful yellow glow. I love this. So you can do anything here. You can put pictures in here. You can use your any kind of these tools that are already in PowerPoint. You can draw, you can design, you can signature, you can put anything here. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a very inexpensive way that we can get outside of that little box and create some dynamic PowerPoints. This is Cameo. It's free with Microsoft Office 365. Back over to you, Kim. Thank you, Angela. That is actually fascinating. I had no idea that was available. And I've just, you're probably noticing I'm using OBS for the first time, another free tool, just starting to learn it. But that is really cool how it interfaces with PowerPoint. So um, we are now ready to move on to the prepared speeches portion of the meeting. Our first and only speaker for today is Graham Carnes. Graham will be speaking from the Engaging Humor Pathway, Level 3, Increasing Knowledge. This Friday is Remembrance Day, also known as, wow, I am so sorry. Armistice Day and Poppy Day and Veterans Day. It marks the signing of the armistice to end World War I, the war that was supposed to end all wars. It did not. But around the world, we use the day to remember those who served and in many cases died in the service of their nations. Today, Graham Carnes will give us some remembrances of his own with We Will Remember Them. Please welcome Graham Carnes, We Will Remember Them. I think you're muted, Mr. Graham. Madam Toastmaster, members, guests, I still choke up when I think about it. Hundreds of plaques, each one of them representing a young life snuffed out, building a railway that their countrymen and allies would have bombed out of existence if it had ever been created. Scores of names on a wall, each one memorialising a man who died as their ship was sunk without warning after a sneak attack on Pearl Harbour. I think of the planks of wood that were the pallets of prisoners facing starvation, privation, and death and distress in Thailand. Whenever I travel, I seek out places of reflection, which honour those who have fought and died for their countries. And each time we visit a war cemetery, a memorial, a place of reflection, I grieve at the waste, the loss, the shedding of precious blood. And yet I do it wherever we travel. Why, ladies and gentlemen? Because as the ode to the fallen says, we will remember them. The men and women who are memorialized in this way died so that we would have a chance for freedom. They gave up their freedom to ensure ours. At Kanchanaburi in Thailand, we allocated a day to travel by bus up from Bangkok to pay our respects to those who died 
building the Burma Railway. We visited the museum near the bridge on the River Kwai to see how POWs from Australia and Britain and other allied nations lived and died, forced to build a rail line that would simply have helped their tormentors. I stood amongst the gravestones at the nearby war cemetery, reflecting that all of these men had died so young, many of them below the age of my eldest son at the time. And I freely admit, I cried. I wept as well as we stood above the watery grave that was the USS Arizona, one of the ships destroyed in 1941, when wave after wave after wave of enemy planes flew down, dropping their cargo of death and destruction. Elsewhere in Hawaii, we paid our respects at the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific, the final resting place of 34,000 men and women who died in their country's service. Here in Australia, we visited war memorials in Canberra, in Sydney, at my home here in Brisbane, yet I actually don't know the names of those being memorialised. Oh, I had an uncle who was a prisoner of war, that's true, and I had a father who spent three decades and more in the Navy, but I have no direct connection with the names of the dead that we see listed. So why do we go? Well, how can we not? I have a life that is blessed. I live in a time when it is possible to travel for leisure in a way that my forebears could never have imagined. I have a lifestyle that is only possible because I live in a society that is free and open and remarkably wealthy. But that lifestyle, that society, those benefits, they've all extracted a price. It's a price which I haven't had to pay, but those who've gone before me did. I was reminded of this as we stood and waited for a train that would take us along part of that infamous Burma railway at a village called Wang Po. Now, I'd just been examining the railway tracks and reflecting that each sleeper along the length of that line effectively represented the life of an allied POW or a Thai indentured slave or a Burmese peasant who'd been press ganged into servitude. And as I was reflecting on that, I heard the giggle of a young Thai child, her mum and dad, passing me on a motor scooter that had been transformed into a family vehicle, the sort of thing that happens all across Asia. And it struck me that those who died fighting the aggression of Japanese forces had in fact won in the end, but they'd won not only the war, they'd also won the peace, transforming sections of occupied countries and of Japan itself by their sacrifice. And that is something worth remembering. I hope beyond hope that we don't allow ourselves to fall once again prey to the old hatreds, that we actually learn the lessons of history, because these magnificent men and women deserve to have their sacrifice mean something. I am concerned, fellow Toastmasters, that our renewed respect for the military might slide into jingoism, that blind patriot, patriotic chauvinism that prompted the conflicts of the 20th century. Oh, now, I'm not some Pollyanna who thinks that armed conflict is always avoidable. Sometimes the sharp edge of the sword is needed to sever the Gordian knot that is international relations. But I implore you, don't let the hatred and prejudices of the past blind you to alternatives. But that's a story for another day. Today, it's a day to say thank you. I'd like to introduce you to Marge and Brian Cairns, my mum and dad. Now, they're gone now, but they put their lives on hold, even on the line in the service of their nation. So to my mum and to my dad and to everyone else who's ever put on a uniform and given their country a blank check for their lives, this Friday will be a day to say thank you. We will remember you, lest we forget. Madam Toastmaster.
Thank you, Graham, for a very thought-provoking speech. And I must say, I agree with every single word that you said. I think that people really need to step back and appreciate what others have done for us and appreciate our freedoms. Next up, we have another kind of tip of the day type presentation. David Carr, you may or may not know, he designed our wonderful online presenters website. And tonight, David will be giving us a tutorial about how to use the online presenters website to email things like the agenda out to members of our club. Take it away, David. All right. All right. Thanks, Kim. So I, I nominated myself to give this quick presentation, partly because I saw Kim had sent out an email to the club saying that we needed roles filled. And, and that's a, a thing that we we do a little bit too often, I guess, that we need to 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 try and get some people uh, rounded up at the last minute sometimes, but it, it's also a good idea to do it a little bit farther in advance. And there are some tools built into our website that can help you do that. I just want to make sure that everybody knows where to find them. And so, ah, that's not, it is not where to find them. Let's say, there we go. No. Okay. <laughs> um, this is our website. Uh, by the way, if you haven't been here today, it looks a little different. Uh, I've been playing around with the styling with this uh, this bold blue color in the background. And yes, that is Postmasters Blue for what it's worth. But if you go to the website and you go to one of our meeting agendas, there's a section here that says agenda, and under agenda, there's a place where you can print the agenda, you can show the agenda on screen. There's some other options where you can see the agenda with some contact information filled in, which can also be helpful if you're trying to fill in roles. But one of the things that, that I do all the time, and that if you're a test master of the day, you want to know how to do, is email out the agenda. So this gives us a look at the agenda in this email template. And one of the advantages of this is it has the link up top. So we wanna, we wanna not only bring people to the website, but we wanna know, let them know exactly where to go to sign up for, for the role. And up top, this gives you a little spot where you can change the default subject line. The speaker's needed. red alert so you can do something up front to try and get people's attention uh, you know a couple of people canceled please help fill in the roles at this point if i click send this will go out to every member of the club uh, i do have a couple of other options here because sometimes if people have already gone to the trouble of taking a role, maybe we don't want to nag the people who, who have been good little boys and girls and who have signed up for a role on the website already. So we can also send to just members without a role, or we can send to just the officers, or I can send to just the test address. I'm going to send this one to the officers, and, and you know they, they know that they have to put up with me every once in a while that they're going to get uh, random weird messages. Uh, let's see, I'll add tests to the beginning so they people who aren't here will know where this is coming from. Um, and this will be sent out to the list that I've selected with my my note up top. Um, and if I went over to my email, I should find that just about immediately it should come through. Since I'm an officer, it will come to me. Hello. Yes, speakers need it. Okay. There are a couple of other things that we can do here also. Sometimes it can help to do something a little bit more targeted. So for example, I can come down here in the new color schemes, these links aren't showing up too clearly. I'll have to work on that. But uh, I could either click to take this role myself, the speaking role, or there's also a link here that says edit and another one that says suggest. 
And I'm going to click on the one that says suggest. And this will allow me to nominate another speaker. Oh boy, there are some things I'm going to have to work on here. But um, let's say we're going to nominate Joni. Say, Joni, you really need to speak next week. But also, if, if I scroll down the list, one of the things that will show me is when this person last did that role. Some of these people haven't done it lately because they're no longer with the club. But say I wanted to send this to, to Maggie, I can say, well, you haven't spoken since last month. Can you please come in and speak? And so this is a way of sending a targeted message to somebody. They'll get a message that says, click here. They don't even need to enter their password. They can accept the role. They can sign up. They can speak. Uh, they can do other things. So I'm seeing a green light, which means that actually I have made a speech out of this in terms of eating up time on the agenda. And I will hand it back to our Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, David. And thank you so much for eating up the time as well. Again, our timer tonight is Lou Brown. Lou, could you please give a timer's report for Graham's speech? Yes, Madam Toastmaster, Graham's speech, I put this in the chat, was, uh, oh boy, it's in here somewhere, 638. I should have done this without having to scroll back. And David's time was 542. Thank you. you, Lou. Now, could everyone please take a moment to cast your vote for Graham for best speaker of the day? And thank you. So we now move on to the table topics slash impromptu speaking portion of the meeting. Tonight's table topics master is Andy Byrne. Please welcome Andy. Well, thank you very much, Toastmaster of the day. Since our topic today is astronomy and dealing with the moon, we're going to have some testing of your knowledge about the moon and how it affects everybody. And I'm going to identify some individuals to talk about that. The first one that I'm going to call on will answer this question. Who knows how the moon was formed? as referenced by space.com, affiliated with NASA. Who knows what happened and when did it take place? I'm going to ask Andre, you know the answer to those questions. And if not, to table topics, just use your time wisely to make up whatever you want. Thank you, Mr. Table Subjects Master. Of course, everybody knows how the moon was formed. You can ask any child that question and they will come up with a definite answer. You can use black and white pen on a piece of paper and it will be right there and probably see it properly. At the same time is in our imagination as what children say. Speaking about practical parts of uh, the moon formation, uh, my assumption is it has been formed at billions and billions of years ago, when probably the universe uh, in a way you know, was expanding. And a moon, uh, in my theory, not scientifically proven, was uh, a planet, uh, a planet uh, that uh, collided with a number of other planets and lost their orbits. And now, is just spinning around the earth. At the same time, in a children's imagination, it can be anything. However, in scientific explanation, I'm sure it has much more value to all of us. Uh, clearly, sometimes when we don't know the answer to the subject, we have to improvise and come up with innovative ideas. 
I should probably organize a little vote of the audience and ask them, what do you think? What's your suggestion? Please put them down in the box. However, the time for allotted to table topics is running really, really low. So I would answer your question, Mr. Table Topics Master, the moon is formed in our imagination. Back to you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Thank you very much, Andre, for that answer. And for the reality check, for those that did not know, the universe was estimated to be formed 4.5 billion years ago and some 900 or 95 million years later the moon was formed by a protostar crashing into the earth the name of the protostar is yes thesa t-h-e-s-i-a and that's why when you look at those soil samples from the moon, you see the similarity because the moon was formed of part of the Earth from this crash by this protoplanet called Thesa. And that's how the moon was formed. The moon is about one quarter the size of Earth. And that leads to some specific impacts. Let me ask Lisa. What's the difference between the gravity on Earth and the gravity on the moon? I think I'm the only Lisa in the house, correct? Right. And I have no idea, but I remember going to the Museum of Natural History and standing on a scale and weighing different amounts depending upon what that scale represented. So I am guessing that there is some difference between the gravity on the moon and the gravity on earth i know when i jump on the earth which i don't do particularly well that i don't jump very high and when i stood on that scale i was kind of floating so i am assuming there's very little gravity on the moon whereas there is much more gravity on the earth i think i would like the floating Although when I watched Big Bang, it seemed that that Howard didn't really like the floating as much as I thought that I might. And I really identify with the character of Howard because I tend to be kind of klutzy and kind of afraid of almost everything, including pain and my own sha shadow and my lack of gravity. So I think it would be really difficult to go into space outer space and experience the lack of gravity and some of the other weightlessness that I would have. And I think I'm much better staying here on Earth. I don't really like climbing. My son's a wonderful rock climber and loves going to the rock climbing gym. And I think he would like that feeling of weightlessness. Me, I, I prefer staying very close to the surface and bed is a real good place especially when when i'm weighted down with a number of blankets so thank you for that wonderful question and i'm thoroughly enjoying participating in your group well thank you very much the facts are is that the moon is about 27 percent the size of earth and that leads to the difference in gravity and why you saw the pictures for from Neil Armstrong landing on the moon, being able to throw the rock miles to the surface of space from his spot on the moon. In fact, it was that characteristic of the difference in gravity and how it impacted one's strength that led in the late 1940s to the development of the comic Superman. And that was based on the model that Krypton was about 10 times larger than Jupiter and had 10 times the amount of gravity Jupiter would have compared to Earth. And that is how he began to have the powers that he did because his flying was really a matter of jumping and falling back to Earth. That's how his flying came about. But there's another question for someone. And let's ask this question 
when did Neil Armstrong actually land on the moon? And was it the first time that we sent a spacecraft to the moon? And I will ask Jim Barber. Oh, thank you, Mr. Topics Master. Neil Armstrong, I believe, landed on the moon in 1969. Pretty sure it was, in fact, I'm very sure it was July of 1969. And depending upon whether you are in the United States or Australia or Europe, I believe it was January the, excuse me, July the 19th or 29th. I'm drawing a blank at the moment. I think it, I think it was the 19th. I'm pretty sure July 20th. Well, you see, it depends upon whether you're in Australia or the United States. Okay, July the 20th, 1969 is when Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, at least according to NASA's account. If you ask the Flash Gordon officiados, or you go back to Superman days and so on like that, they will quibble as to when the mankind first landed on the moon. But this is, again, the historical indication. Was that the first landing on the moon? Absolutely not. No, we crashed unmanned satellites into the moon several years before Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. We wanted to make sure that it was not made of green cheese. The, we were pretty sure that that was not the case, but nevertheless, they want to cover all bases. So they wanted to make sure of that. They wanted to make sure that it wouldn't get swallowed up in, in vast dust beds and that sort of thing. So we actually landed several satellites on the moon. Some of them we crashed. Some of them we did tried to do a soft landing uh, prior to Neil Armstrong. But he was the first man to the first human to set foot on the moon. And he was a very, very brave person to attempt what no one in history had done. Done before. And that's it. Back to you, Mr. Topics Master. Fantastic. Next, I'm going to ask Maggie Lou this question. Here it comes. What is title breaking? Do you know what title breaking is? No, sorry, oh, Andrew. I... I don't know that part. Would you mind to explain further? Certainly. Tidal breaking is the gravitational impact on the Earth from the moon, and it slows the planet down so that we have less wobble to the Earth. Helps the climate, and people say, scientists say, that because of the wobble effect, or the lack of the wobble effect because of the tidal uh, breaking, that we have a more stable climate around the globe than we would have had without the impact of the moon. The other thing the moon does affect is it affects the tides. And as you hear your weather reports and talk about the, the sea, uh, you'll see that there is a definite relationship between that and the moon. Speaking of those kinds of relationships, do you know, that for the last two or 3,000 years, we've been on a calendar that we have. But before that time, we had calendars both in China and amongst the Jewish nation that was based on the lunar cycle, not the solar cycle that we're in right now. And that lunar cycle affected everything because it was based on timing for agriculture but one other thing that it did is sort of interesting and it's been written about a lot in the science community can you tell us what impact on women the moon has had joni i appreciate whenever i get to speak on my femininity I am woman and I am proud and more proud than most. The thing is that the male of the species has a daily cycle 
Have you ever wondered why the day is set up the way it is? I'll tell you, it was set up for the male of the species. How does the moon affect women? Well, if you ask any doctor, it's not only the crazy people that come out when the moon is full, it's also babies. Or my personal favorite, depending on where you bleed during the time of your cycle, it actually can state your mental state. The moon is pretty intricately connected with the female being. Just like the moon waxes and wanes, so does our emotions, to be completely honest. Now, I'm not going to say the dreaded PMS is caused by the difference in our cycle, but there are times when, if you're in a certain part of your cycle for a female, that's the time you reach out. That's the time you network. At other times, it's a time that you just need to be still and be away from everybody and be in yourself and be at rest. The beauty of being a female and being controlled by the moon is that our cycle changes. It goes up, it goes down. But we get to understand nature a lot better than persons controlled by a 24 hour clock. I mean, after all, if I'm sitting out with a plant or with the ocean who is going through something pretty similar that I am being pulled to the moon, we now have something in common. I mean, after all, when I look out at the ocean, I see someone else who is also guided by the push and the pull of the moon. And like all moths, makes me happy to be nocturnal. Back to you, our Toastmaster. Thank you very much. Kim, how long do you want me to go? I'm thinking it's 529. I'm thinking two more. Two more. Okay. The moon has had a tremendous impact on everyone on the planet. And with those creatives, the moon has been associated with tremendous amount of songwriting, particularly love songs. Christine, tell us a love song that the moon features prominently in its words. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests. When I think of love songs that have the word moon in it or something about it, <laughs> there are many out there. I like creating my own songs, my own music, so I can just whisper a lullaby in my husband's ear about what a beautiful night it is with a full moon and romantic moon and eluding to whatnot. But there are so many out there. It's been said, fly me to the moon is another favorite. What is the beautiful thing about moon, midnight? the moonlight, the beach, the atmosphere. You can create anything that you want. You can have an illusion of romance, the illusion of mystery. There was one time when I first drove into Florida to move down to Pembroke Pines, I arrived to Daytona Beach first because I wanted to show my children the beach. It was 4 a.m. in the morning. I wanted them to see, and I knew exactly what location to go because I have a friend that lives on the beach. I wanted us to go on the beach and watch the sunrise over the horizon, little by little. It was mysterious. It was a little bit scary because I thought, what if there's creatures out there, my, my kids or even me? But it wasn't that way. A soft, smooth breeze and the ocean waves lapping, our feet wet because we're edging down. And then boom, the bright sun streaking through that dark light. Phenomenal, breathtaking, I'll never forget. 
Back to you. Thank you, Christine. All right, we have probably time for just one. Actually, I'm going to step in and say let's let's end it there, if you don't mind. Okay. And great job. Your choice. Your Go on your hands, Kim. Oh. Thank you, Andy. Great job with the table topics. I'm I'm actually glad that I wasn't part of that because I'm a natural blonde and those were hard questions. <laughs> so <clears throat> excuse me. Next, I'd like to ask Lou for a timers report for the table topics. Thanks, Madam. Toastmaster, Andre came in at 157, Lisa at 203, Jim 204. I counted Andy since he actually qualified <laughs> for table topics when he took over from Maggie. 123, Joni 217, and Christine 214. All the times are in the chat. Thank you, Lou. So if everyone could please go ahead and vote for your favorite table topics, that would be great. Our next portion of the meeting is the evaluations. This is the educational part of the meeting. Our general evaluator for tonight is Jim Barber. He will lead the evaluation portion of the meeting. Please welcome Jim Barber. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster, my fellow Toastmasters and our most welcome guests this evening. The evaluation of the portion, <clears throat> the evaluation portion of the meeting is an opportunity to provide feedback to our speakers. We had one, count them, one speaker this evening, Graham Cairns, and so we are going to have one evaluator for Graham's presentation. Evaluating Graham Cairns' presentation is our multitasking person himself, David Carr. So David, oh, I will remind David in case he needs such a reminder that timing for evaluations is two to three minutes. So if you could please respect that time, we would appreciate it. Back to you, David, take it away. All right, thank you, Jim. Fellow test masters, welcome guests, and especially Graham Karens. Graham, you, you've spoken on this topic before. I know you you brought something to this meeting. I think I remember one that began with something about the poem about they shall not grow old. Uh, I imagine this is this is something that you might speak on at local commemoration services. Something that's important to you. Um, and so you did a good job of bringing us along on this voyage to, uh, to these places that you have visited, these places of remembrance, I guess, combining your interest in travel as well as your, your interest in this particular topic. You did a good job of conveying the sweep of history and these, these different events along the way. Now it's always, Difficult with you, Graham, to try and come up with something that could be improved. But but what one thing that did occur to me was that you may actually have to set context for some of your listeners, particularly some of your younger listeners, who are vague on the details because they've come up, they're another generation or two removed from that World War II generation that I think you you still have a, a more of a direct connection to. And uh, I know I've talked to my kids uh, and they, they are a little bit vague on, on some of the details. They, they know that World War II happened. They know that Hitler was a bad guy uh, and they may not know too much more than that, that you, you need to bring them along. I mean, I know the Bridge Over the River Kwai, because there was a movie about it, I think starring Alec Guinness, uh, which I've never seen. So I don't know too many of the details. I do know about the, the, the labor camps in the Pacific. I know a little bit. And so you may actually need to spend a little bit of time on setting that context. And maybe it would have been better to you know, shorten it 
focus on one story and tell that story a little bit more thoroughly to make people really understand the impact. So just so that all your listeners understand the impact of what you're talking about. A technical point, though, that, that I'll, I'll come up with is I find the, the floating torso where you're cut off about here and you're floating in air, I found that a little bit disturbing. And so if you can sort of, you know, I know using that image in a corner of the screen is an advanced technique, but if you could either put a frame around it somehow, like Lou is doing right now with the circle around his picture, or, or just park it in a corner of the screen, uh, that might be a little bit better. A good speech, good language. Uh, I love the sharp edge, edge of the sword needed to sever the Gordian knot of international problems. Uh, I'm sure the grammarian wrote that one down too. A red light, and so I will stop. Thank you, Mr. Uh, General Evaluator. And thank you, David Carr. Mr. Timer, did David squeak in? Mr. G, yes, David just squeaked in at 3.27. Whoa, all right, three seconds to spare. Congratulations, David, you qualify for voting. We have one person to pass your votes to, so Carolina is kind of getting off a little bit light this evening, but please pass your votes for your favorite evaluator, which would be Graham, to Carolina. And while you are doing that, I will call on our team members to give more specialized reports on our meeting. Let me start with our chat monitor, Sunny Fridge. Sunny, what were we chatty about? You're muted, Sunny. Not chatty at all, Sunny. You're, you're muted. You're muted. All <laughs> righty. <laughs> Finally, the sign from me. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. G. I was so busy looking in the chat, I almost missed my cue here. What I found out today, what people were talking about. First of all, we had a great link by our president, Andrew Byrne, who shared that Zoomtopia begins November 8th to the 9th. And if you're familiar with Zoom, Zoomtopia is all things Zoom. So if you want to attend that event, click on that link. Several members thank Angela Heath for her cool tips and great presentation on how to use Cameo. And one awesome thing that I love about the chat is that members and guests get the opportunity to give each other encouragement and feedback to the speakers. For instance, Kim said Graham's speech was a moving and memorable presentation. And Kim also complimented guest Lisa on giving her response and a touch of humor during the table topic session. And so many people were interested in table topics and adding their comments about the moon. Even I chimed in with a quote or a mention about John Lennon saying how the moon shines. So there was a lot to be said about the chat. And if you never knew, right where you actually click on people's names to the right there's a happy face and three dots the ellipses if you click on that that is how you save the chat for later back to you mr ge thank you sunny i appreciate the reminder and now someone has been watching us all evening long and that someone is Joni laidlaw Joni, what did you see this evening? I started out with my binoculars because everyone was so moony, but eventually I had to step up to a telescope because we were all astronomical. Suggestions so for those who remain on camera. Remember, we are a part of the audience and I know that we're home and things happen. So here's going to be my suggestion. If something happens to distract you, our speaker might believe that your expression is based on what they're saying and not the little 12 year old behind you who is celebrating his birthday. So be cognizant of that whenever you are on camera. But overall, love the background, love that online presenters is always on theme. And it was a part of my visual communication, visualization in practice. Back to your general evaluator. 
Thank you, Joni. Before I introduce our next team member, I want to go on record as saying that I am have not been described as Mooney, but I have frequently <laughs> been described as Looney. And now, our grammarian this evening is Christine <laughs> Campbell. Christine, how did we do grammar-wise? <laughs> Excellent. Wow. Big, wonderful words, injections. And I'll tell you, I'm going to read some of these. It just hit the moon. And I was moony all over this. <laughs> Here is a, a few of them. Okay. Now, our main speaker, I can, it's poetic the way he writes, the way he speaks. But some of them is just, just little phrases is, I think the planks of wood, and it goes on, or owed to the fallen seers. They gave their freedom to ensure ours. Uh, dropping cargo of death and destruction, swallowed up in a, or given a blank check for their lives. How can mm -hmm. you not go? A powerful, impactful, thank you so much. I, I appreciate learning what Thesa, and from now on, I'm going to point to the moon and say, Thesa, it, it sounds mythology, mythology uh, given. Uh, David Carr, I do have to pick something with you because when I got on an hour early and nobody was there, <laughs> I threw the darn agenda to the website and it didn't look the same. I thought, oh my gosh, this has changed too. I don't know what's going on. It probably doesn't work. And all these other names. So you're kindly explaining something. Why didn't you give us any warning? <laughs> I was lost today. And then also, I just want to say, wonderful, everybody. Lisa, she, she mentioned, I don't know if I like the floaty. And of course, uh, Jim mentioned swallowed up in the vast dust beds. So very poetic. Everyone did a fabulous job. I could go on, but I will turn it back to you. Nicely done. Thank you, Christine. Great. Appreciate that. All right. Online Presenters has been enriched by the recent addition of a new member, Isabel Cadori. Isabel was our Wizard of Oz this evening. Isabel, mm -hmm. how did we do? Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Uh, our club did a wonderful, wonderful job in terms of filler words. I, I, it's very hard for me to um, catch any. I, for one moment, I saw Kim made a filler words, but it turns out she just cleared her voice. And <laughs> I got another false excitement that's kind of moony. And I heard, I thought Jim did something and, and you were just clearing your voice. But uh, <laughs> Dave, you made my day. Thank you for using filler words. And I'm glad I can fill out my report. Dave, you used the three N's to us and one so. Happy to be <laughs> Thank you. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Wizard of Oz. Isabel, appreciate good report. And now it's time for my evaluation of the meeting. And I hate to do this every time, but it seems like every time I'm general evaluator, I am left with trying to come up with suggestions for improvement. And quite frankly, I think that this is one of the best clubs in the world. And that was demonstrated by our meeting this evening. So how can you possibly improve? I applaud everybody who made the effort to attend this evening. I know David was pulling his hair out a little bit, trying to get people lined up at the last minute. Kim was trying to do that as well. By the way, since I mentioned that, Kim, fantastic job as there you are, as Toastmaster of the Day. Absolutely, you did a great job. That was entertaining, informative, just a great presentation of the theme. So everybody though did a great job and it was wonderful. Before I return control to our Master Toastmaster of the Day, I will call on Carolina Ramirez, who had the really tough job of counting all the vote for our best speaker, the vote for our best evaluator, and the votes, plural, for our table topics presenters. So Carolina, how did we do? Jim, it was exhausting, but I have the winner. And the winner is drums, Christine. 
Congratulations, Christine, you are the winner. Thank you, Carolina, I appreciate that. And I, I appreciate you going through all the votes that way. That is it for the evaluation portion of the meeting. It is now my pleasure to return control to our Toastmaster extraordinaire, Ken Leeming. Take it away, Kim. Thank you, Jim. And thanks to everyone for a really fun meeting. And um, I, oh, so there you go, Isabel. Um, um, I will now hand the meeting back to our president, Andy Byrne, and apologize because we probably could have done a couple more table topics. I just uh, wanted to be sure we didn't go over. So That's thank okay, you Kim. so much. That's okay, Kim. And I want everyone to be thinking about next week, which I think on the 14th, we're doing a speakathon. We're coming to the end of the second quarter. And for those that want to finish their paths and generate some more points for themselves and the club, think about the speakathon because we can take up to six speakers during the speakathon. The other thing is here's a test. I want you to put in the, either in the chat or hold up on your fingers. How many types of Zoom are there right now? Who knows the answer? The answer is four. They are Zoom meeting, Zoom webinar, Zoom conferences, and Zoom events. Know how to use the different types, and you can get along with that. As I said in my uh, chat, Last year's Zoomathon or Zoomtopia introduced 1,700 application integrations with Zoom. I can't wait to see what's going to happen during this year's Zoomtopia. It'll be very, very interesting. I also listed the dates of specialty programs, workshops, including the TLIs for those that are interested in doing those programs. There are lots of opportunities. I'm sure David will be announcing opportunities for conferences and competitions and workshops. So stay tuned for David's announcements on those issues. And if you're using a particular program that you want to share with others in the club because it will help them out, please let David know because I'm sure we can work you in as well. David, do you have any questions or want to identify who's going to be the Toastmaster of the Day for next week? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, 10 minutes. I'm sorry? We have 10 minutes. We have 10 minutes. <laughs>